Greetings and welcome to another installment of Active Training in the 21st Century, A Global Perspective. I'm Peter Zazali and today I'm delighted to be joined by such a dear friend and colleague, Heather Timms. Heather, it's great to see you. Kia ora. Oh, kia ora, Peter. It's lovely to be here. Thank you very much for asking me. It's my pleasure and, and your voice is going to be so important to this conversation. Um, so for our listeners, Heather is currently uh, the Director of Active Training at Toi Whakari, National Drama School of New Zealand. She has been there since 2012 and has made a significant difference uh, in the training of the actors that have come through there. And by extension, uh, New Zealand theater, New Zealand film, and I would even argue in many ways communities throughout New Zealand, um, because Toi Whakari is, is much more than an active training program. I say that with with some personal experience, having had the, the transformational um, time that I spent with you and your colleagues and students last, last year in 2019, when I was in residence there for a bit. So that was well, really Kia ora, Peter. That's lovely. Thank you for that beautiful, that beautiful introduction. Well, and, and by way of introduction as well, just to give our listeners um, some idea of your enormous accomplishments, um, you're an accomplished theater maker, writer and director in particular, content creator, which of course gets manifest in your teaching to your students. And in many ways, you're first and foremost a teacher. You know, as I said earlier, it just makes a huge difference in the training and lives of your students. Um, you were trained yourself at Edith Cowan University, where you received your BA honors, as well as a master's degree uh, in sociopolitical theater making. And, um, and you're very much a conscious, you have, you have, you're very conscious of the community and the ways in which your work and the work of your students makes a difference in society, which is something I've always admired about you. Um, so we're going to talk a bit this morning, or this afternoon in your case, about the training at Toy Fakari. And Heather, what is it that, what are some of the distinguishing attributes? What makes Toy Fakari um, uh, particular in, in, in your experience of, of being a teacher there and, and, and somebody who's designed a, a curriculum as well that, that, uh, by which the actors um, learn on a daily basis? Yeah, okay, great. Um, well, Toi Whakari as a, as a kura or as a school um, trains five different disciplines. So acting's one of those. So we also train managers, people set in props, costume construction, design and um, and acting. So um, I, I'll speak specifically to the acting program. Um, and um, yeah, so the things that I think are particularly distinct about what we're doing, um, about eight years ago, we made a departure from the um, conservatoire model, which is um, followed by, by many across the globe. Um, and the conservatoire model offered us such a lot of richness, but for us, it was for a particular time and place. And um, in our context in the Pacific, um, that place is very different and our times are very different now. So um, we have our actors now, um, they have to be able to be initiators. They need to be content creators. They need to have a level of independence um, and they also need high quality screen training. So um, we, um, we moved away and we really, um, I think I had a question about, um, I think so often, and um, I see um, conservatoire models training and the outcome is, a, is five, maybe 10% making it. And um, and then what would it be if you tr if you designed a model of training where a hundred percent of the actors that you train made it? Um, and so it was really sort of a re looking at what does making it mean and what do we need to be able to um, focus on for that to occur? So um, we train actors and we train artists. Um, and in terms of the actor component of the training, um, it's about rigor, it's about discipline, it's in those fundamental crafts of the body and the voice and the imagination and the play. Um, 
uh, it's, it has to do with text across live and screen. Um, so things that I think are um, pretty universal in most actor trainings. Um, and then the other part is the artistry. So we're really committed to developing the artistry of each person that comes into the school. And that means how do we liberate and free up um, each individual actor's authentic individual voice? Um, how do we give them the skills to be able to collaborate in environments without losing themselves? Um, how do we give them the skills to be able to make their own work? So both live work and screen work. Um, and um, how do we ensure that they leave the kura as lifelong learners? Um, yeah, so I, I, um, it's interesting because I think that as we have discovered uh, now kind of eight years in, um, that ambition that we're committed to also has a natural tension inside it because there's something about the, the discipline and rigor required for the craft, and we're very committed to that. And then the anarchic freedom also required for an artistic voice. So um, I think that, you know, that is a demand for teachers uh, working um, in, you know, in the model that we have. Um, and I think uh, probably the, um, the other thing that's, very distinct about what we're doing is our focus on training independence. When I came to the school, <clears throat> because before I moved into the acting program, I was uh, working with um, two other colleagues, Taina Moitara and Jade Erickson, and we were looking at um, how the school worked with um, the values and principles inside Te Ao Māori. Um, but maybe I can talk about that a little bit later. But um, uh, what was occurring was that actors were leaving the training and they were almost, it was almost like they were falling off an edge. And there was a level of, um, for, for many, maybe a level of crisis because they were, they were used to being held and, um, and then to be independent and to drive all of these things themselves, as well as maintain their craft, was really challenging. So um, we really asked the question, how could we bring that struggle for independence inside the training rather than leave it till once they left? Um, and that works both in the craft side and also in the artistic side. So, um, we run a program called self-directed craft training and we scaffold that from first year through to third year and um, from their morning classes where they're they're learning skills they have several uh, one hour classes before lunch where they have to work on integrating all the different threads of their actor craft into their own self-directed craft inquiry so how do they plan it? How do they manage it? How do they execute it? And how do they keep building it? Um, and that's under um, very strong supervision from staff in first year and then increasingly less um, by the time we get to third year. And then on the artistic side, we have a, um, a program called independent practice. And um, that's where students are given time to self-direct their own creative projects. Um, and maybe the most, the easiest way to look at that is that one of the terms in the final year, in third year, is um, given over to the students to self-direct either the making of a piece of work, the making of a film, a particular craft inquiry, we have a, an amount of contestable funding so the students can apply for money to be able to support what they do. And the fruits of their labour are um, presented in a festival we call the Festival of Work and Development. Um, yeah, so I would say they're, they're, they're key distinctive elements. 
Well, thank you, and, and, and Heather, and it was, it was so beautifully put. And in those elements, within what you've just shared, you talked about training the individual artist and their particular voice and fostering that over the course of three years. And there's also this element of difference, uh, and there's a tension inherent to that. So how do you all at Toy Fakari manage those differences? Differences that occur in any one of a number of contexts, right? Differences in rehearsals, differences in discussions, differences in terms of identity, um, personal identity for that matter. How do you manage that um, in such a way that independence flourishes? And I say that quite consciously because we tend, I mean, we, in, from a Western ethos, we tend to regard difference as competitive, contentious, um, and that's not if I'm not mistaken, that's really not at all what's going on Toy for Car. It's in a remarkable collaborative community within which difference becomes an important component of the learning. Does it not? Yeah, uh, yeah absolutely. Um, I mean, I think it's probably a, a, a combination of, um, of the way in which we've sequenced and structured the training. Um, so in our first year, we are really working to push difference forward. So we're really wanting our actors to differentiate themselves because there's, there's always such a kind of a desire to, to, to norm. Groups want to norm and become similar. But um, it's a process of also educating the students to the value of the uniqueness of their own, own voice and actually collaborations are stronger if all the voices inside them are their most unique self. Um, and, you know, a way we would do that, I mean, we've got lots of ways of doing that, but, um, you know, at the end of the first year of training, each actor makes a solo work. So that's a very practical, artistic, craft-driven way in which we suddenly see after a year of training um, 20, 22 very unique voices. Um, I mean, I would say that's, that's, a, that's a thing we pride ourselves on, is that at the end of three years, um, every actor is different from each other. Um, and um, yeah, they've not arrived at it together. They've arrived at that journey together uh, in their own particular way. Yeah, yeah, they have. Um, and um, I mean, I think that a school culture promotes particular things. So we promote and support um, people speaking, speaking up, um, people uh, standing by their own um, point of view, but then also um, fostering deep learning, uh, deep listening, so that they can be moved and changed by another in order to um, keep growing. So it's not a belligerence, it's a, a deep curiosity in the uniqueness of, of us as humans. Indeed. And of course, New Zealand is a bicultural country, and bicultural is, you know, it's kind of a loaded term, because it suggests a binary, and yet, um, there are ways in which indigenous and, um, and, um, and shall we say, those descending from, from uh, colonial background, there are ways in which, uh, historically throughout New Zealand, those two identities have coalesced and, and worked through their own differences. How, how does Toy Fakari um, operate as a bicultural institution reflective of a greater national identity? Yeah, great question. Um, because Toy Fakari is the national drama school of New Zealand. And so um, it has a bicultural mandate. So it is mandated to um, wrestle with these questions of... Um, of everybody's relationship to Te Ao Māori. And um, the school has been on a long and rich and rigorous journey with that challenge. Um, and 
I think one of the challenges that I saw when I came into the school alongside Tana and Jade was that inside a conservatoire model, which is a European model, um, with all the best intentions, um, working then with Te Ao Māori, it can be othered. So it becomes peripheral and, um, and that people can then perform um, in pōhiri or in particular rituals and practices. But the question that, um, led by Tana Moitara, the question we were wrestling with was, was the school now in the position to be able to put the values, practices and frameworks of Te Ao Māori in the centre, not on the periphery? And then what would that mean, both for the culture of the school, the framing up of the um, curriculum, um, and for staffing, uh, you know, for, for the whole life of the school? Um, so that was, that was an investigation that um, we began now over 11 years ago. And then um, I moved into the acting department eight years ago as we started to go, okay, and now how do we embed it? And that was the impetus to start to um, redesign the actor training. And how's that investigation continuing today? Because it is a process. I mean, it's a process that, that it I... Is, yeah, it is an ongoing piece of work, Peter. Um, and, uh, and it needs to be. Uh, it, these things are not fixed or static. Um, I mean, last weekend, one of the things that happens at the school um, is that we have gone away on uh, Nuhu Marae, which means all 150 people in the school have travelled seven hours up north to, uh, to Tainas Marae. Um, he's uh, from the iwi Rungafakata to keep learning in situ um, about um, these frameworks and practices. Um, but with our current situation, um, that was not possible this year. And so um, Tana and his partner Napaki um, came and we had a wānanga. Um, and- um, For our listeners, a wānanga is, how would you characterize that? Um, well, a wānanga is a particular look at how you learn. So you don't learn passively. It requires each person to engage with the focus of um, whatever is being discussed. And so that meaning is developed collaboratively with everyone in the room. Um, but uh, it also means that it happens durationally so it's not a class, it happens over time. So our wānanga was two days. Um, normally our nuhu marae is for five days. Um, and um, yeah, I, um, I was reflecting with you earlier was that um, although there was a sadness that we couldn't go back up to Manatuki in Gisborne, there was a richness because we often, um, it's a piece of work to keep translating what we learn on Noho Marae back into the school. Whereas here we were in a unique position where it was happening within the school. Um, and I think the questions of translation and application were that much more present with us last weekend. Oh, wonderful. So the work you've done over the course of your career, particularly in the last eight years at Toy Fakari, uh, really has been transformational. Uh, and I say that from a very personal perspective, because I know it, it was transformational for me when I had the, the, the honor of being with you all for seven months um, this past year. What, what, Heather, as a trainer, as a teacher, as an artist, as someone who is just predisposed to making a difference in the lives of others and serving your community, what is it, if I may ask, that you, you value the most about your journey at Toy Fakari? 
or what are some of the leading, what are, what are some of the outstanding you know, practices that you have in, in the great work that you do on a daily basis? Oh, well, there's maybe two questions in there. Um, sure, sure. Or maybe I've heard two, um, because um, personally, what has been most profound is um, I have never encountered a, a, an institution that is so willing to risk and to uh, be brave and bold. Um, and because we are small, uh, the organisation is able to be incredibly responsive. So, you know, there are um, challenges with being small, um, funding and, you know, uh, resources and all of those things. But what it does allow for is incredible innovation. And I think that it attracts people to it who are deeply interested in, in some of the big questions around education and, and arts. Um, so that's, that's on a personal level. In terms of um, key things that, um, that I, I think um, uh, can you repeat that second part of your question, Peter? Oh, it's wonderful. No, I mean, you, you pretty much answered it. Uh, oh, right. What, what is, you know, what, what triumphs, um, celebrations do you, do you have, um, you know, on behalf of your students and, and team, you know, on, a, on, you know, on, on any given day after any given experience, like coming out of Noho Marai, for example, which is such a, you know, it's such an enormous uplifting experience for everyone. Um, how, what, what is that like? What is it like to experience that on a regular basis? Um, um, yeah, I'm so grateful to work at the school and with the students that we work with. Um, and um, we have worked hard to keep enriching the demographic of the students that come into the school. So as a national drama school, we are charged with the responsibility and um, pleasure of telling the stories of New Zealand. So, um, I mean, I might be going on a bit of a tangent here, but um, I was, we have actively um, worked at continuing to try and diversify, diversify our student body. So it means how do we engage with the rural areas? How do we engage from the top of the country to the bottom of the country? How do we keep making our application processes accessible enough so students feel that they can come because I think that um, sometimes these things can be quite inaccessible and particularly um, if the focus is purely on text I think it can actually get in the way of really being able to see the huge talent that might be there so um, yeah we've really redesigned as well our whole um, application process to make it far more um, uh, joyful, uh, rigorous, but accessible as well. Um, but how is it to be there? I mean, I think for all the people you will have talked to, yourself included, Peter, working in the arts, you know, it's a, it's a calling, um, it's hard work, um, but um, I am daily stimulated by the desire by myself and the team for innovation and constant evolution. Um, that's why I'm still there. I've never been in one place this long, um, but we are committed to continually learning and evolving what we're doing based on the questions that we're asking. Indeed. And, and asking those questions and answering them as you and your colleagues do is indeed a calling. And, uh, and I think so many people are better off, you know, that because you, this calling was yours. I know I am. Um, Heather, it's, it's such a pleasure to talk with you today. Um, this is Heather Timms, Director of Actor Training at Toy Fakari, the National Drama School of New Zealand. A very special place being led in no small part by a very special trainer and colleague. Thanks so much, Heather. Kia ora. Thank you so much.
Oh, kia ora, Peter. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Lovely to talk to you. Indeed. Lovely to talk to you too. Bye now.